back again and today I'm going to talk to you about the resources that I use to study for the USMLE step one. The first thing you're going to find all over the place is going to be the USMLE step one first aid book. Everybody swears by this book and guess what? I do too. This book is basically a extremely highly condensed resource where information is just a bunch of words thrown at you. For every section of the book, you're gonna find the condensation of information that you need to know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will make any sense to you at first. So if you open the first chapter, which is by the way, biochemistry chapter, and nothing makes any sense, don't feel bad, you're not alone. It's just that the information that's on the book is so condensed, it doesn't make any sense unless you had studied it or at least refreshed your memory about it right before. So I suppose this is made for medical students to use as a review book after they take their classes in the morning and they come at night and they just wanna refresh what they studied and take extra notes on it. However, for someone like me, who had been out of medical school for like six years by the time I started studying for this none of it made any sense it was just pure depression in a book <laughs> now, what really helped me initially is the online platform that goes with the book it's called USMLE RX what's really good about the platform is that for every part of the book there was a video that would explain what is what and give you a little bit of a refresher there were also some flashcards that come with it and you could also do one or a couple of questions that very much resemble the ones that you'll find on the exam so it was also a very good practice Initially, the USMLE RX platform was good and enough to kind of go through the book for the first read, take notes and make sense of what is what. But after that, it wasn't really as useful to me personally. I couldn't find a lot of answers to many of the questions that I was having while going through the book for a second time. But honestly, whenever I needed to understand something more, I would simply do a Google search. And there's tons of resources that are in a written format or a video format that did more than enough for me to answer my questions. Now this book is divided into different sections. The first sections that I labeled right here are going to be basic sciences, which are biochemistry, immunology, microbiology, pathology, pharmacology, public health sciences. And the second section that I labeled right over here is for systems. And that's cardiology, endocrine, GI, hematology, oncology, musculoskeletal, derm and connective tissue, neurology, psychiatry, nephrology, reproductive system, and respiratory. Every section of the book is divided differently, but one thing is for sure, none of them is enough for you to study for the USMLE Step 1 exam. You're definitely going to need resources here and there for every section of the book to either make sense of the information that's on there or to understand things more or to complete the information, which is sometimes not very complete, especially that my book was outdated by the time I started studying. So I do recommend you get the updated version when you start studying for the USMLE exam because medicine keeps moving, it's not a stagnant science. There may be few differences and tweaks here and there, but they can make all the difference on one question on the exam. I'm not gonna go in depth of every section in this video, maybe on another one another day. But one thing that I really wanted to emphasize is that the pathology section is not enough. First of all, the basic science part of the pathology goes through some basic principles very broadly. And then within every system part of the book, you're gonna have a specific pathology chapter within every section that goes into the pathology that's related to that particular system. Now, the way it's laid out on the first aid book makes it very hard to really make sense of and really memorize easily. What I found to be super helpful was to use the Pathoma book. This book is by a professor that everybody swears by, and guess what? I do too now. I got my book from the official website, and when you get that, you get the online videos that go with it as well. I would recommend going through the basic principles on this book first, then complete your notes from the first aid book on the pathology section from what you read here. And it also goes after that by system, so I would highly recommend for every system, when you get to the pathology section, you read the pathology one from here, then you go and complete the one on first aid with the information that you get here. Now, when it comes to the online videos that come with the book, I didn't have to use all of them, but sometimes it really didn't make any sense and really all the images looked very, very similar. So I had to understand it a little bit more and I would go and watch the videos and they are gold. They're phenomenal. I just love the way this professor explains things. I mean, I had some brilliant professors in my medical school and this professor's way of explaining really reminds me of them. Now, these are two book resources that I definitely used along with the online format that comes with them. The third most, 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 most important resource is the UWorld Question Bank. The Question Bank comes with different subscriptions as well. We can go into details in another video if you guys really want it. It is an online platform that you log into that offers you 3,000 questions in every single section of the USMLE Step 1 exam. People usually use it to test themselves and see how the exam will be. 
Quite frankly, for me, I did use it as a study resource for both step one and step two. If you're not familiar with how the UWorld QBank works, it's over 3,000 questions about all the subjects that you need to study for the step one exam. And you can absolutely do random questions here and there just to test your knowledge. But the way I used it is that I would go into section because the QBank is also organized into topics and sections. It made it very easy for me to use it as a study tool. Let's say I am studying cardiovascular embryology. I will go on my UWorld QBank and I would specifically choose cardiology and within cardiology subsections, I would choose embryology and I would only do the questions that are within those topics. For certain topics, you may only find five or six questions and for others, you may find 200 questions. So no matter how many questions there were on the QBank, I would totally do all of them and I wouldn't care if I'm getting every single one of them wrong because guess what? The answer section of the U world is gold. The way they explain things sometimes, along with the tables and the graphs that they offer as part of the explanation of the answer, they sometimes surpass both this book and this book in their value. Honestly, I was making a separate PowerPoint document where I would put every single bit of information that I found really pertinent on your world that I knew for sure I wasn't going to get from the first aid book or the Pathoma book. Eventually, I did use the UWorld QBank to test my knowledge and to get myself ready for the exam. Throughout the process of studying, I heard a lot about flashcards and I gave them many, 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 many tries and they just didn't work for me. However, what really worked for me and quite frankly, what always has worked for me during medical school has been the read and write method. I don't know if it's actually called like this or if it's actually a thing or not, but it's basically very simply what it is. You read and you write. Whether I am watching a video or I am reading from a book or I'm reading from a written content online, I always have my pen in my hand. And whether it's on a notebook or it's on a white piece of paper or whatever it is, taking notes along the learning process helps me tremendously to memorize things. For some reason, the physical process of holding a pen and writing down what I'm learning makes it so much easier for me to memorize when I'm on the exam day. It just comes back to me as a very visual, vivid memory of me writing down that information. And that's what I've been always doing in medical school. And I did a lot of writing. First of all, I had a wall full of post-its. I had three walls full of post-its. And then I would write on colored paper, on regular paper, on notepads. This is only what I could find last weekend when I went back home and it's just, I look through these notes and I can literally remember what I was studying that day. It's just insane. For some reason, the visual memory is my strongest tool when it comes to studying. Now, I wouldn't say do exactly what I did for the studying. I would highly recommend that you explore multiple resources that are out there because for some people, some things work better than others. I get distracted very, very easily when I have a multitude of options to choose from. So sticking to two or three things really helps me stay disciplined and do what I'm supposed to do. One more thing, if you're still in medical school or just fresh out of medical school, I would say really hold on to your personal notes because everything that's in these books that's in the USMLE exam is everything I studied in medical school too. Only it was many, many years ago and it was in French. But I'm pretty sure if I had my own notes, they would have helped me tremendously. Now, one more thing, don't be like me and explore your first aid book before you start studying because Little silly me only found out two weeks before my exam, two weeks, that there was a full section that is called rapid review at the end of this book. And it is gold. This section has tables that go through the classic presentations, classic labs findings, classic and relevant treatments, key associations, equation review. Trust me, when it comes to cardiology and respiratory, you're gonna need this table because they get confused very easily and easily confuse medications. This is plain and simple, just tables of information with what is related to it, what is most commonly related to it, let's put it this way. And this is really useful because at the end of the day, no matter how important it is for you to understand the concepts in medicine, you have to memorize. So many things just do not make any sense and you just have to memorize their meaning or their impact on certain diseases or for some treatments where they are used exactly. The thing is, if you look at it initially before starting to study, it is not going to make any sense to you. It's basically gonna be just a bunch of words here and there. But when you study the whole thing and you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe I studied all this and I can't remember what is what, and you go on these tables, it kind of organizes ideas in your head and at least gives you some things that link things to other things. There's a bunch of things in this sentence, but you get what I mean. 
Anyway, whatever works, honestly. I'm very big on visual memorization, and so whatever makes me memorize things by seeing them, I would just stick to that. All right, so in a nutshell, if I had to take the USMLE Step 1 all over again, I would use the first aid book with the online platform that has videos related to every section of the book. I will use the Pathoma book, Fundamentals of Pathology by Professor Sitar, along with the online videos, not for everything, but for most of the things that didn't make sense and that were really, really hard to memorize. And I will use the UWorld question bank as a study tool. For every section that I'm studying, I'm going to be doing the questions that are related to the one specific section on the question bank. I hope this helps you find a way to get started with this whole process. It gets super overwhelming going through it, getting registered through ACFMG if you're an IMG, and then finding the right resources. It can be really overwhelming. It can take a lot of time. If this is helpful to you to get started, I'll be very, very happy. The purpose from this video is to give you very basic, very simple things to start from. And trust me, at the end of the day, whether you're only using these or other resources, the ones that I mentioned today are almost unanimously, whatever that word is, almost used by everybody anyway. So you're not gonna lose anything by starting with these. If you need anything to complement your study, and there's tons of other resources out there, feel free to write in the comments what you exactly need help with. I'll be more than happy to find resources for you the same way I was finding it for me while I was studying. They were enough for me. I hope they're a good start for you or enough for you as well. And I wish you good, 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 good luck. And do not forget your world. Your world is absolutely phenomenal. Good luck. Stay positive. I believe in you.